Hello and welcome along and welcome back to Oak Hill. Today we're going to be finishing off our seeding. We're going to be getting some of our first fertilizing done as well, which is why we have our 6614 in here. Uh, we need to customize this ready for us to take. Uh, yeah, ready for us to go and get... Uh, a fertilizer spreader so we're gonna put the narrow tires on it uh the trollerborg narrow tires on it uh get that uh, yes that won't cost us anything which is great uh but really uh i left this in here Ooh. we forgot on our front weight so we're gonna take this up to the shop in a minute uh but really what we uh what we really need to do first that's a lot of reallys. Is get the other tractor out and get some jewels on that because we also have a field of corn to finish planting. So we'll jump into this, switch the wheels on our 7615, uh, and then we can get this tractor out and into the field as well. So part that there. Get that. No, we don't want to customize the weight. We want to customize the tractor. And same as the other one. Now, this is probably going to cost us some money to put this. We've got rear twins, wide tires, wheel weights. Yeah, so we're going to put the rear twins on this. Uh, that is going to cost us 4,000. So customize that. Yes. And, oh, and it's. Okay, so sometimes we get tractors that are very, very annoying, and these this is one of those. If I customize my tractor, and I customize one item, do not remove my other options. Uh, so we want uh, configuration, we want the front hydraulic, there we go, customize, yes. And then we can reconnect that. Uh, that is incredibly annoying when it removes your options like that as well i think it's because uh some of the options disappear when you've got the front loader option on there or you're unable to have the front loader option when you've got some of the options so it tends to reset things but it's uh yeah it's massively annoying when that happens so like last time we're going to connect this tractor up to the uh to this cedar uh, I'm very much liking doing the seeding with the dual wheels on. Uh, it compacts the ground less and it gives us uh, a good a good bit of grip too. Let's bring this up. This little massy is, is a brilliant little tractor. Although our seed pallet has, is jumping around a bit on the front of it. There we go. It's just... Put those back on it. And we're going to have to go and put those soybeans away in a minute. So we'll do that before we head down to the shop. Uh, so refill. So those can refill into that now. And as long as we leave them there. Should be good. Uh, and we can go and clean up a little bit. So I'm going to use this shed very much for uh, my seeds and uh and sort of a store facility and things like that going forwards uh, as we kind of have already uh, also going to be the place where we put our equipment uh, especially the equipment that would uh, that wouldn't sit outside i am thinking of altering these or altering how i store these and putting them against this wall maybe uh for now i'm going to put it back to how we were we have so much canola left over looking at how much we've used of each set of seeds this year uh potatoes we obviously have used the most of uh but the others the canola is just unless we got a huge amount more canola than we got of everything else that is uh that is quite a lot of canola left although again the maize we've not used quite so much uh what's the other one is that the soybean no it's not soybean what is that that is that is soybean oh wow we actually have soybeans that we need to get restacked so uh, i'll go do that in a minute they need to end up back on the same pile because at the moment they're not all right grab that do that 
and we'll put this pile of seed potatoes in the corner are those also seed potatoes it's that is possible as well yep seed potatoes there too now these again should stack so if we bring this over the top of the other one uh, and stack them together we should end up with a single box yeah there we go it's emptying into the one below it i don't think there's enough space in the one below it for it to actually uh, fill it but we'll put it on top anyway yeah there we go oh, a very small amount left in that top box there so we need to do the same with the soybeans and then we can head out and get the maize planted in our last field and this is just a nice little cleanup uh, gets us back to where it just just sort of organizes our shed a little bit we'll make it easier when we come to sort everything later but yeah i i love this about these seed pallets i wish the fertilizer pallets did the same thing now will all of this go on one pallet yes it will perfect there we go so actually we have almost as much soybean left as we do uh the canola it's uh it's a huge amount we've got left right let's get this we'll take this lift it fold it up and away we go and we want to head down here because it is the field at the bottom here that we want to get planted next and this is this represents our final field this is the last one we need to plant uh in order to have all of our fields planted this year um and then uh, as i said we need to get something to do some uh some fertilizing as well i think we're gonna end up with a big trail fertilizer i think that is gonna that way we can just go around all of our fields get everything done in one nice big fell swoop and when it comes to doing the uh, when it comes to doing the uh, liming come next year uh, we'll be able to do that uh, very easily right we want this to finish here course play up onto that course generation field 76 uh headlands as all well we're going to do two headlands with this piece of kit because it's a lot wider clockwise uh up down rows first turn in the corners and generate me a course so yeah if we did three that would actually reduce it even more but it will stop at that at this point here and start at this far corner and we'll get the corn in and we will be done and dusted good to be this nicely ahead well a, a day in hand for the end of the season is absolutely perfect right and drive it now why does it ah oh, it's not gonna run this it's not going to run this without solid fertilizer in it so we are gonna have to do this ourselves that's a bummer uh let's clear this off then and uh yeah we have got time to get this job done so let's get this job done over here ah so it's gonna be a more classic way of doing it annoyingly uh we don't need the gps oh we don't need the course play window up we can just go like this start her up and uh yeah we've still got time to get everything done so uh let's get it done away we go now this field is a really weird shape and i think i've managed to get the right angle to uh to plant out you can see we're a little bit of an angle to how course played in it but this would seem to give us the longest period on this field where we're where we're doing it at this this longer length so i'm i'm not got an issue with that it's lined up with that that very bottom corner over there 
and it's slightly across some of the uh, some of the angles on the field but this is definitely giving us a bigger angle with which to work with or a, a bigger length with which to work with on the rest of the field when it comes to cut it uh, it might cause us uh, it might cause us a little bit of odd bits and pieces uh, after doing the headlands but I don't think that's going to be a massive issue uh, let's get this done and you can see we are definitely not in line with uh, that end of the field uh, but it's uh, we're not we're not ending up with uh, a massive uh, diagonal issue uh, down the side here I think we're gonna have to just drive back up uh, otherwise we're not gonna have the space well, I don't know, actually. Uh, that is probably a single run going through there. Where it gets a little bit more dodgy is down the bottom corner here, uh, where that is definitely more than one width of our cedar. So we will have to do a little bit in this bottom corner and then uh, and then lift and and go up. But it's, yeah, it's it's a little bit of... This field has a lot of kinks and a lot of odd angles and uh, it's just a wonderfully odd shaped field. So uh, we've got just got to roll with that. And so, yeah, we'll have to add a little bit down here. And we'll take this to the point where uh, we're at one width, uh, which is going to be almost at the top of this corner. We'll lift for a little bit. Uh, and then we'll go back down. So, in fact, a one width is exactly at the peak. So, we're going to end up doing a fair amount of double seeding there. But it's uh, we kind of need to in order to, uh, to get this to be right. And then we've just got this top corner to do. Uh, so, it's, it's, it's not taken us too long to do this field, which is good. Uh, we are going to get the... Uh, it means we should get the other work we need to do done today as well. And as I said, I'm very much thinking we want to buy ourselves... Oh, well, this is the trouble. We want to really lease ourselves uh, a large spreader. But if we lease it, we can't change the wheels on it. That uh, might not actually be a problem right now. Uh, all of our crops are first stage, uh, so we don't need to worry about care wheels. Um, I've just put them on the uh, on the tractor because uh, I wanted to. Um, yeah, I don't think actually we do need to worry about care wheels. If we were going any further than where we are now, we would be destroying crop by not using care wheels uh, on there. Um, but uh, you yeah, know, I think we I think we're going to be okay. So. Uh, we can hire it, uh, we can do it without care wheels uh, for this early in the process. Uh, and then if we need to put more fertilizer on, which we're likely to, uh, we can get ourselves, uh, we can get ourselves our sprayer for that anyway. So let's, uh, let's just get this field finished off, I think. Working our way back around the headland and uh yeah this has gone pretty well we have plenty of corn still in our cedar uh i think we're looking at the amounts we have left over from doing this year's seeding uh we aren't gonna have to buy that much for next year which is good we're gonna need to buy more rye and we're gonna need and we won't need to buy now this is the interesting one we won't need to buy more potatoes uh, potatoes, of course, we uh, can reseed stuff from this year uh, that we harvest from this year. So what we're going to do with those is we will hold on to those and get them uh, redone uh, and, and replant some of our potatoes from this year. Uh, makes sense. Will save us a lot of money and uh, is generally, uh, yeah, it's generally going to be helpful to us to do that gonna bring this oh, we'll, we'll go the whole way down to about here ish and that way we'll come back and finish this headland off here once we've turned around and got this bottom corner done trying to drive on the uh, where I've planted as little as possible 
Not, not completely possible. Um, oh, completely possible to avoid it. But, uh, yeah, the more I can minimise it, the better. There we go. And that gets the last of our maze in this field. Uh, but yeah, so we can re we can reseed our potatoes. Um, that will that won't be an issue. Uh, and uh, and so yeah, it's really only the rye we'll need to buy uh, more seed for next year, which is great news. Uh, that will uh, that will save us a ton of money going into year two. Uh, and is a nice bit of preparation. This though is uh, is finished. So we want to look now at heading back up to the farm and back up to the shop. So uh, I'm going to get this tractor back to the farm, sorted out. Let's fold that while that's going, and uh, we'll head up to the shop and see if we can get something for us to do some fertilizing with. So it's just gone midday and we've brought the 6614 up to the shop. Let's turn that off and park it here. We do still have the care wheels on it. I didn't uh, I didn't bother changing those, uh, but let's see what our options are. So in the fertilizer technology, there's a few options we've got. We've got these two breedles. Uh, we've got the K105 and the K165. The difference is not a massive amount that they hold. Uh, and this one, the smaller one, uh, that actually is only 390 per day to keep. Now we can put an extension on this, take it up to 1400 liters. So it's lowest. Uh, so it's lowest at none is uh, 9,000 litres up to 14. So we're going to add an extra 5,000 litres onto this, uh, which I do quite like. Uh, wheel setup is standard or narrows. We will put the standards. And we've got spreading discs or the 6 metre spreading unit. Uh, I'm just going to put spreading discs on here. With precision farming, uh, it's not too bad. And none of our fields, we've only got one largish field uh, to work this on. So that would do quite well. It'd be 2,000 for us to rent, not an issue. Uh, and uh, 397 a day. Uh, again, we have, we've got quite a big cost at the moment. Um, there is this one here, this horse one. I wanted to use that for a while, but uh, the problem with this one is it doesn't do lime. Uh, what is it? It holds 10,000 liters, so it holds less, uh, and it costs more money. So uh, not really a useful piece of... <laughs> <laughs> not really a useful piece of kit this one and that really is our choice i think in the interest of uh keeping things uh nice and easy for us uh we're going to go with this with the big extension and the spreading discs uh, 397 pound a day uh, and the initial leasing cost of 2000 so let's lease that uh, that works fairly well for our farm that fits into the whole thing that we've got at the moment of getting things that are large but not too large for what we're doing and then under here we need some fertilizer uh, so we have 14,000 uh, if we get two for six of these that should do it now i should be able to bulk buy these no i haven't got the bulk purchase mod on here so two ah right now we need to borrow some more money so we only have enough for two at the moment uh let's good see how far two of these go but uh, I think I want to fill this right up. We're, go we're going to use all of this. So what we're going to do, uh, we know that we need uh, probably about another 10,000. So into here and borrow, borrow. So we're up to 510. So we've now gone above our initial half a million loan. And we should get this back fairly quickly, uh, especially once we start getting into doing the grass work. So uh, fertilizer, we need four more of these. So one, two, 
three, four. And for the first time tonight, I think we're going to end up going into the re uh, into the red. Now, we do have the bulk fill mod on here, so I'm going to move my uh, fertilizer spreader. It goes quite well on this little uh, on this 60 tick 14 by the looks of things. I think it's going to be a, a good matchup, this. Uh, and then we've got one of my new favorite mods. Absolutely love this. So if we bring this around here like this and drive it alongside all of our fertilizer, you can see numbers, ooh, numbers appearing as we do it. And so you can see that we've got a one here. Refill. And it will take from each of these. And if I move forward afterwards, it will continue to it should continue to to recognize and continue to fill. So there's one done. If I move forward a little bit, it brings it up with four at the end. Absolutely perfect. So uh, let's get the rest of this filled. And then we can head back to our farm and start getting some fertilizer spread. And almost all filled up. Is it going to all fit? No, there's 400 liters left uh, for us to come and pick up. Uh, but I think this should be more than enough for us to uh, get spreading on our fields. So let's head down there and uh, and see how well we can do. And what we're going to do is go clockwise around our farm from field 61 here. Now there's a little bit of a yeah, there's a little bit of a kick out here, so that will uh, work for us. And I don't know how big our spread is. But we'll give it a go. And, oh, wow. The spread on this thing is massive. Uh, which is good. Because that is just going to take us less time to do everything. Uh, and it is going straight for the full whack of fertilizer. So, it's going to be fairly expensive uh, doing this this way. But it does need bringing up. So, if I bring up the F1 menu... You can see, yeah, we are just throwing 160 kilograms uh, of nitrogen per hectare uh, on here. Uh, just because it, it needs that much to bring it up. Uh, it does mean that we shouldn't need to spray any of these fields. Uh, but you never know. So uh, we're just, yeah, going to go round, get all of this done. Get this round in the corners. See if we can cover everything. Uh, apologies if you can hear my wheel, by the way. Um, I did notice in one of my edits from a couple of days... No, from yesterday, in fact, uh, that you can uh, hear vibrations of it coming through the desk. I have ordered new audio equipment uh, to fix this issue. So, uh, should be Friday's video that things improve, hopefully. And there we go. That is almost our headlands done. That is efficient. We're at 93%. Definitely the right setup we got for this. Very, very happy. Uh, I think we need to get the rest of this field finished. Coming up to finish the field, and um, we've used 85% of the fertilizer by the look of it. Um, gives me an idea of roughly how much we're going to use doing this job. Uh, and it's looking like we're going to be using, uh, yeah, 86% 80, at the moment. Is it going to go down to 85? Not quite. So 86% uh, of the fertilizer that we have. Now, field 61 is uh, fairly meat. Oh, actually, it's one of our larger fields. So that's good. Uh, with any luck, that means that we'll use less, or we'll see how much we're going to use on field 62 next. I uh, actually see field 63 next. And then we will get a good feel for uh, for where we are. So, as I said, we're going round clockwise. Uh, we could end up using uh, less or more uh, than we've got in here, obviously. Uh nonsensical things that VF says. There we are. Right, so we want to set our course again. 
and we're using yeah we're using a lot less on this field uh because i think this is sandy loam yeah loamy sand sorry so set myself a new start point a new end point perfect whoa no nope, or not where are you going i think we might have to eyeball this by the looks of things that went massively off course there we go and i'm gonna go around my headlands and it did turn well within this block which is very good news yep and then down here and that should allow us then to go round and yeah we've the way i've done it would suggest that i need to start at this side of the field and work my way back otherwise what you end up with is uh, is what we got now where i've got to go across rows to do it so turn that off and we'll work our way back across the field all right and see if we can actually get this to set a proper course so set my course there start it up away we go and set my course again and it heads it heads massively over there like that i don't quite know why it's doing that but that's a little bit weird well we are destroying our potatoes right let's uh let's finish this off shall we and there we go and because we are on loamy sand it seems that we require a lot less fertilizer to complete that so uh yeah wow that is we have only gone down to 80 percent uh that's not bad i think we've still got a lot of fertilizer in here uh and uh and yeah and we should have plenty to finish off no values detected at the moment but we are about to go into our next potato field and as um, soon as we're into that we can start to spread again and yeah again we're going slightly higher because it's now potatoes on loan so that doesn't go to the full whack um it just uh yeah just gets us as far as we need to go which is what i love about uh about this uh it is just a great way of not having of it actually saves you money precision farming which i suppose is what happens in real life uh, precision farming is the application of uh your fertilizer and everything to be more specific and uh and more money saving so uh yeah perfect and doing this field we've only used another three percent of our fertilizer that's even better i know four percent we're down to 76 percent gonna go down to the bottom here try not to run over my crop as much as possible uh, kind of a, it's it's kind of a given to be honest that you're you're gonna do that a little bit but uh, if i can minimize it that is great three fields in uh and we still have over 70 percent of our fertilizer left uh, i think we're gonna get this whole farm done of one fertilizer spreader perfect i bypassed field 32 because as soybeans it doesn't actually require any uh, extra nitrogen um and we're now doing a field 31 uh this has canola in it uh field 33 uh that again is soybeans so that's another field we won't actually have to apply any nitrogen to uh in order to uh get it up to spec uh, so that's perfect uh we are gonna be in a uh, absolutely cracking position with this 
we are not going to use all the fertilizer that is in this uh, in this spreader uh, all of our fields are going to be fully fertilized off this one spread uh, which is great I kind of wish that it required two spreads no matter what so uh, here you would uh, you would put in half uh, half the amount you need uh, and then later on you would uh, you you could spray the rest on but it's not the end of the world uh, we've got weeds all over the place uh, so soybeans here if we look at this uh, and get this on here that's interesting oh it's grass we're not no there we go crop does not require additional fertilizer so we don't need to do anything for the soybeans round to our maize now and let's get this done a lot of fields in one go and uh, and it's just perfect we are going to get ourselves set up though this field here i don't know if that seems light or dark compared to our other stuff we'll find out in a moment this might not take any or it might just be a trick of the light nope that is light perfect so i'm gonna get the maze done now unsurprisingly the maize has dropped our fertilizer pretty considerably uh, we have 58% uh, left uh, not the end of the world but you know we uh, we kind of want to uh, to have this go as far as possible not bad though considering we are now halfway through our fields uh so i'm back with more than halfway through uh 60 63 62 33 32 31 66 all done uh we've got 73 74 and 76 left to do and uh and yeah so we're gonna have it all done today absolutely perfect uh beacons on out onto the road and our next one uh, should be 73, which I think is accessible from this lay-by, if I remember correctly. If not, it's accessible just after it. Uh, yeah, it's not this lay-by. It's accessible just after. Uh, over here by, yeah, here we go, by this radio tower. Is that a radio tower or an electric tower? I think it might be a radio tower. Uh, anyway, we can get into this field from here. So let's get ourselves into this corner. And again, start the spreading going. And this field is also going to take a fairly large increase, 160 kilograms uh, of nitrogen per hectare. Um, but in all honesty, we have more than enough now uh, to ensure that we can get all of our fields done. Finishing up field 73 and uh, yeah, got a very, very nice coverage on here. I'm going to twist this around here and send ourselves to this exit. Perfect. Uh, field 74 up next. Uh, and we are just under 50% of this tank left. That is uh, that is huge. We've got just two fields left to do with this. However, I think it's going to be uh, good for us when we do our grass fields next time uh to get those uh see if we can immediately use this on those to get those up and running uh and next year we're going to be in a really strong position because if we can get these grass fields cut and done and uh and and sent over to the bga we should also be able to get the uh we'll then have a whole load of digestate if we can get three cuts on the grass off this year a whole load uh over to the digestate uh of digestate from the bga a load of money coming in as well um and that should cover both our loan uh which is monstrous and our uh and our leasing fees our daily leasing fees at this point must be somewhere in the five thousand pound mark so we're spending around about ten thousand pound a day uh just trying to keep uh well servicing the loan and the leasing fee 
we are we as you can see we do not have that amount of money left today so i think it's going to be uh, for the first time us going into the black oh sorry into the red next game day uh, and we will have to borrow some money in order to uh get uh the grass cut for a start um but then uh if we can get uh, part of the bga filled uh then that would be good uh we should be able to then sell off uh the silage up there and with two bga clamps up there what we can do is fill one in a season get that covered get that sold uh and then fill the other and and we should never be in a situation where we don't have some silage uh to get sold uh in one of the uh one of the three main seasons of the year uh winter of course uh well winter will probably be selling stuff spring will be when we don't so uh yeah it should all play out rather nicely and this is the last bit before our final field this is good this is very very good all right and i'm gonna go in to the left and get this field done as well and so there we go pretty much the maximum application uh across all of these fields uh is done and uh and we can bring this out and be finished that is brilliant i'm really really pleased with that uh, we're in a position now where all of our fields are ready going forwards. We do need to get rid of uh, the weeds with the herbicide. Um, but otherwise, absolutely perfect. So we're going to leave this here for today. Next time, we will be cutting some grass, getting that up to the BGA. And probably just running this over the cut grass fields uh, to use up some of this. But with 38% left in here, we have plenty to play with. Uh, for now, though, uh, all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. And for all the latest videos from Virtual Farmer, please subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.